Hello and welcome back to my Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Review Marathon where we've finally only got two more games left in the series to talk about. One of which is the upcoming Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 which is a remake of the original two games and the other game which we're taking a look at today is also a remake of those original games but in the form of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater HD, a game which was released in 2012 and came out on the PS3, Xbox 360, and PC. Pro Skater HD was developed by none other than Robomodo, the same team behind the atrocity that is Pro Skater 5. So already, we're not off to a good start. But this time, I actually ended up enjoying Pro Skater HD, and I would even go as far as to say that it's a decent game. It has some huge flaws which we'll get into in a second, but it also makes several improvements not only to Pro Skater 5, but also to Pro Skater 2X, which was the first remake of the original two games. Not only that though, but it even makes some great additions to the main series Pro Skater games too. Before we get into that though, let's first talk about the rubbish aspects of the game, because there's quite a lot to talk about there. The biggest issue with this game is that just like with Pro Skater 5, it doesn't feature any local multiplayer options and was designed to be played online with friends rather than in the same room as them. I always say that this is a bad move for games with a heavy emphasis on multiplayer components because one day those multiplayer servers are gonna stop working, and then you'll just be left with a husk of a game, whereas local multiplayer will always function as intended. If things with Pro Skater HD had gone according to plan, I would assume that the multiplayer servers would still be active and we would be able to take a look at it. However, the game was taken off of digital stores, meaning that anybody who doesn't already own a copy of it can no longer access it. This of course means that no one plays the game on PS3 or Xbox 360 anymore, and the only way you can even play the game nowadays is by getting the PC version through, shall we say, illegitimate means. Which I normally wouldn't condone, but because there's literally no official way to get it anymore, I feel like it's fair game. I'm just glad it did actually come out on PC, otherwise it would effectively be lost to time and I wouldn't be able to play it. So, at least there are options out there if you're desperate to give the game a shot. The issue with all of this though is that the PC version of the game, even when it was officially available, didn't have any multiplayer options at all. It had no local modes, no online modes, and not even any online leaderboards. So the one version of the game that you actually can get lacks some of the key features of the console versions. But because the console versions were taken off of stores, they technically don't have any form of multiplayer anyway, so I guess they're the same as the PC version nowadays. So yeah, the bottom line is that the game has no multiplayer options, which for a Tony Hawk game is absolute insanity considering that's one of the main ways people enjoy these games. The second huge negative with this game is that as well as multiplayer, it also lacks creator skater in creator park mode. I mean it doesn't even have a botched version of creator skater like Pro Skater 5 did. Unfortunately, once again, this means we can't have a round of created skater or real skater. But more importantly, this takes away from the element of personalization the older games have and results in making Pro Skater HD feel lacking in content. A creator park mode in a modern Tony Hawk game could be incredible, and unlike with the older games, you would now have the ability to share your creations online as well as play other people's parks, so I don't know why this wasn't a focus. Interestingly, with the Xbox 360 version of the game, you could actually play as your Xbox's avatar, and this could have been seen as a sort of replacement for the creator skater. But the issue there is that the Xbox 360 version of the game is now completely inaccessible, and the PS3 and PC versions of the game completely lacked this feature, making them inferior versions of the game, which really makes no sense. 
The third issue with the game is that not only is it lacking in content in several key side areas, with the multiplayer creator skater and creator park modes being absent, but there's also only seven levels in the base game, making it feel like a best of compilation rather than a full on remake. An interesting thing about Pro Skater HD though is that it actually received DLC, which gave the game three new levels and four new skaters, two of which are returning from Pro Skater 3. It also added in the Revert move, which debuted in Pro Skater 3 as well. So this boosts the amount of levels up to 10, but considering the original Pro Skater had nine levels, HD's selection feels extremely underwhelming. It could have had every level from Pro Skater 1 and 2, just like 2X did, and then the Pro Skater 3 DLC could have contained every level from the third game, which I believe would have made this the biggest selection of levels in any single Tony Hawk game, but I guess that's just too good to be reality. Aside from the issues with the content available here though, the other, arguably more important problem is that the game just doesn't feel great to play. There's serious issues with the physics in this game. Very often you'll find yourself moving at a snail's pace because your skater will just choose to not pick up any speed. Sometimes when you go into grinds your momentum will just halt, making the gameplay feel very stuttery and bailing will cause you to go into a ragdoll state where you'll sometimes go flying into the sky or get stuck in pieces of the environment, and it just looks cheap as hell. Plus, just like Pro Skater 5, there's no animation of your skater getting back onto the board, and it just fades out and fades back in, and you're magically on your feet again. The overall problem here is that the production value of the game has been dramatically stifled compared to the older games. It probably wasn't given a long development time, and I can guarantee that it wasn't given a big budget either, and really, who can blame Activision for not having faith in the brand at this point? Pro Skater HD was released after Neversoft stopped making the games, but to be honest, even the Neversoft games had started to decline in quality by the end of their era, but after Neversoft wasn't at the helm anymore, the series was treated like a testing ground for gimmicks. With stuff like Tony Hawk's Motion being a Nintendo DS game which used a makeshift gyro control scheme, which had you moving the entire console around like a lunatic, and then we had Tony Hawk's Ride and Shred, which both used a skateboard peripheral to control the game, and you can imagine how that turned out. Pro Skater HD was probably seen as the last shot at reviving the series, and this is most likely why there aren't many levels, why there's a lack of content, why the game doesn't have a physical version, and why the game was priced very cheaply, only being around $15.99 on release. By the way, I feel like I should mention the reason as to why Pro Skater HD was taken off of digital stores. It's rumoured to simply be a case of the game's soundtrack using licensed songs and the licenses running out, making it illegal for the game to be sold anymore because of those songs contained in the game. However, I seriously doubt that that's the whole story. If this was the case, surely they could have just have patched the game to remove the music entirely, therefore making the game quiet and kinda weird, but at least you would still be able to play it. It just doesn't add up to me, and I feel like the reason the game was effectively deleted could be due to the backlash the game received when it first came out. However, after doing a little bit of research about that, it actually comes across like some reviewers were quite positive towards the game, so it just creates this confusing situation where nobody really knows why the games were taken off of stores. So the game has flawed controls and physics, no multiplayer, no customization, very few levels, and a lack of production value which is seen in the boring menus, the fact there's no live action opening or unlockable videos, and in other areas like the fact you can't view a track list for the background music and customize it anymore. So with all of this being taken into consideration, why do I still like it? Well, firstly, I love how it actually addresses some of my problems with Pro Skater 2X. The levels from Pro Skater 1, which are Warehouse, Mall, and Downhill Jam, have new goals added to them, which makes them feel more in line with the levels from Pro Skater 2. 
The scores required for the high pro and sick goals have been increased to compensate for the fact that you can now manual and achieve much bigger combos. And there's also cash collectibles in every level too, as well as a cash reward for completing goals. These are really great changes made to the more dated levels, and it brings them up to the same quality as the levels from Pro Skater 2. Speaking of which, the goals in the Pro Skater 2 levels are unchanged here, but that's fine because you don't really need to add anything else to these anyway. The levels taken from Pro Skater 2 are School 2, Hangar, Venice, and Marseille. So overall, you've got a pretty great selection here, even if it is a bit minimal. Another thing to point out here is that the one competition level featured in the game, which is Marseille, is actually no longer a competition and has proper goals, which I found to be a pretty nice surprise. It's really cool how Pro Skater HD not only gives you some levels that you're used to with the same goals, but it also gives you some levels that you're used to, but with brand new added stuff to find and do, which breathes new life into them. And it also makes some of the unused areas of the old levels actually have a purpose. Where the game somewhat falls apart with its new goals though is with the Pro Skater 3 levels, where we have Canada, Airport and Los Angeles return. The thing is though is that despite these three levels being incredible choices, with Airport and Canada in particular being two of my favourite levels from the entire series, the goals have been altered dramatically from the original game, seemingly because of the reduction in the amount of NPC characters and interactive elements. For example, in Canada, instead of having to jump into a tree to knock the snow out of it in order to bury a bully, or having to do combos to impress skaters in the skate park area, you now have much more generic goals, like collecting snowballs and destroying snowmen. Although, as a side note, I do like how the snowmen are smiling until you get close to them, where the smile will turn into a frown as you skate into them. That's some nice attention to detail. But still, it's a shame that the goals from Pro Skater 3 weren't the same here, because it feels like a downgrade with these new goals. Another advantage with Pro Skater HD over 2X is that the levels aren't separated into different playlists for each game they appeared in, and rather, they're in one big playlist and are mixed together. I personally really like this because it makes all of the levels feel like a part of the same game. But what I will say is that if this game would have had every level from Pro Skater 1 and 2, maybe the option to make the levels appear in the order they appeared in the original games would have been nice. But seeing as there's so few levels here, that doesn't really matter. And of course, one of the biggest improvements made to Pro Skater 2X here is that with the Pro Skater 3 DLC pack, you're able to revert in every level of the game. Although, to begin with, I think the revert was only intended to be used in the Pro Skater 3 levels, but was then decided to be implemented into every level instead. This was obviously a great decision, because it brings the quality of the game's fluidity up to the standard of Pro Skater 3, which in my opinion was the height of quality for the series. While this is great, and it is a positive it has over 2X, I will say that the revert in HD kinda sucks. It feels quite janky and the animation looks stiff. Plus, I found that doing a revert into a manual sometimes outright didn't work properly and my combo would be ended prematurely. And when I say this sometimes happens, I more realistically mean that this happens more often than it actually works like it's supposed to. So that's a massive shame and is another element of the controls and general feel of the game that really lets it down. So far we've been comparing Pro Skater HD to 2X quite a lot in this video, and I want to take a step back from that to take a look at it in comparison to Pro Skater 5, because it turns out that HD is quite a lot better. Pro Skater 5 is just such a mess, even compared to HD. But just a few of the ways HD is better are that, well, firstly, you can actually bail in HD, 
So the element of skillfully building up combos and the risk versus reward aspect of keeping them going is still present. However, HD almost has the exact opposite problem to 5, which is that I would say you bail too often. Just hitting into a wall or a slight little bump in the road seems to make your skater go limp and fall into a ragdoll state. And to be honest, this is an element of the game that becomes really annoying if you're used to the older games. As you can imagine, the game's addiction to bailing, combined with the clunky controls, isn't great. And these two things combined make the game feel incredibly frustrating at times. But if you want to look at it positively, I would still rather it be like this than like it was in Pro Skater 5. Obviously another advantage is that the levels are way better, but that's to be expected with these being Neversoft designed levels. The general structure of the game going back to the 2 minute timer and having to complete as many goals as possible in that time is so much better than the structure Pro Skater 5 has. Pro Skater 5 was a lot more similar to Pro Skater 4 in that way, where you start in a free skate mode and have to activate and complete goals one at a time. I really feel like the Tony Hawk games started to go downhill after they strayed from the original structure because the arcade feel of having that constant time limit just worked so well with the game's design. There's also no stupid gimmicks in Pro Skater HD, like a double jump or ice powers like there was in Pro Skater 5, which is an immediate advantage and shows confidence in the base level design. The last important thing I'll mention here is that the levels aren't completely empty and lifeless in HD. There's vehicles driving around and there's birds sitting on rails which fly away when you get close. There's paper blowing in the wind and there's even sometimes actual NPCs standing around too. Pro Skater 3 felt a lot more alive than HD, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that HD is the pinnacle of the series in this way. But when we're comparing Pro Skater HD to 5, HD is so, so much better in this area. Probably because HD wasn't developed entirely around playing the game online with other people. The graphics are even better in HD than in Pro Skater 5, and I would even go as far as to say that this is a pretty good looking game in general for a PS3 era title. In terms of talking just graphical fidelity, this is probably the best looking Pro Skater game to date. However, when you take into consideration all of the janky animation and all of the physics problems, that kind of takes away from this a bit. But if you were looking at still images from the game, this probably would be the best looking Pro Skater game to date. So that's technically one advantage it has over even the older games. Although, it looks like it won't have that to its name for much longer with the PS4 remake coming out soon, and that looking set to be the best looking Tony Hawk game ever made hands down. The one single area that I think Pro Skater 5 beats HD is in the controls. While the controls in Pro Skater 5 aren't good compared to the older games, it doesn't have problems with momentum and I never felt like I was bailing for no reason. But aside from this one thing, and the fact that 5 does have a creator park and technically has a creator skater mode, HD is better in every other way. The special tricks work exactly like they did in the original games too, which is awesome because I hated how they dumbed the special trick system down so much in Pro Skater 5. Pro Skater HD allows you to buy new tricks and map them to different controller inputs, which is exactly how it should work. When we're talking about comparing Pro Skater HD to the main series games, discounting Pro Skater 5, it's obviously not as good. Even if the controls had been perfect, it still would be an incomplete remake, lacking loads of levels and modes from the original games. But it does have some positives over the main series, which even though are minor, is still a good thing to see. The biggest thing that I think this game actually does maybe even better than the main games is that the unlockables are constant and you're rewarded for getting 100% of the goals in each individual level. Sometimes you'll unlock a new deck, or sometimes it'll be a new cheat, but these are things we've seen in the series before. But the new thing you can unlock is new game modes. 
At the start of the game you have access to career mode, single session and free skate. That's the bare minimum of the essential modes that were present all the way back in Pro Skater 1. But then by playing the career mode, you unlock Birdman, Big Head Survival and Projectives. Which are all actually pretty damn good and give the game that little bit more content to somewhat make up for how much is missing here. So Birdman is a mode which I think actually appeared in one of the later games in the series, but it appears here for the first time in a Pro Skater branded game. This is where you need to collect a bunch of floating coloured orbs, but in order to collect a certain colour, you need to be performing a certain action. So for example, the red orbs need to be collected in the air, and the green orbs need to be collected in a manual. This is a really good concept for a mode, and it forces you to come up with some creative lines to maximise your efficiency with the timer. But the issue is that the controls let the game down massively when you're trying to do so many things under a tight time restriction. In the main game, this doesn't matter because it's not like you need any run to be perfect to achieve any of the goals. But here, you do kinda need to do a lot of the levels almost perfectly, and the game is really against you. I found myself not going into wall rides when I wanted to, and seemingly going straight through orbs in the middle of grinds, and it was just annoying. It's a shame because I really like the idea of this one, but it just misses the mark. In an older game, this would have worked really well, because the controls were much more precise. I also think that this would make an interesting multiplayer mode as well, being a competition to see who can get the most orbs at the end of a time limit. The next mode is Big Head Survival, which is where your head slowly inflates, and when it reaches a certain size, it'll blow up and end your run. So the challenge is to keep landing combos to deflate your head, and the bigger the combo, the more it'll deflate. So do you risk doing a big combo, allowing your head to become massive, and then potentially bail and ruin the whole run? Or do you do smaller combos, not deflate your head as much, but if you mess up, you'll have another chance to do another smaller combo? It's actually a really good idea, and I like it. You actually might remember both of these modes from Pro Skater 5, because they did reappear in that game. However, in Pro Skater 5, they were a part of the main career mode, and as such, they felt a lot more gimmicky there. Whereas in Pro Skater HD, they're just these two little extra modes on top of the already superior career mode, and that's exactly how I think content like this should be handled. The third and best extra mode is the Projectives, and this is unlocked for getting 100% as a single skater in every level. This mode is basically another career mode, but it's a lot more difficult, asking you to get a sickest score, which is much greater than the sick score. And it also brings in some of the objectives from Pro Skater 4, like collecting combo letters and getting a high combo. The other two objectives are to find eight skateboards and boneless the magic bum three times. These are a bit bland because they really just boil down to exploring the level even more than what you did in the normal career mode, but it's not offensively bad or anything. Plus, I do find it charming how Boneless the Magic Bum is now canonically Ollie the Magic Bum's brother. That's cute. This Projectives mode is something that I was wanting to be a part of the Pro Skater series all the way back from the first game, and while a similar thing did appear in Pro Skater 4 with the Pro Goals, it's nice to see a similar concept here in the classic timer-based structure. More variety in the Projectives mode would have been appreciated though, because there's only five goals per level, and they're all exactly the same in each level too, which is a bit of a shame. Oh, and did I also mention that the Projectives mode has a one minute timer rather than the standard two minute one seen in the normal career mode? Yeah, that also makes this mode a lot harder too. Another thing that I love about this extra content is that you do actually unlock stuff for doing every level in these modes. You unlock Ollie the Magic Bum by beating all of the Projectives, you unlock the Robo Modo Robot by completing Hawkman in every level, and you unlock Big Head mode for doing every level in Big Head Survival. So the incentive for doing these modes is actually pretty high. Speaking of unlockables, you'll be happy to hear that Officer Dick returns in this game by fully completing it as any character other than Tony Hawk. 
And by completing it as Tony Hawk, you unlock Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Tony Hawk, which is a low-poly PS1 version of Tony Hawk, which I think is probably the best secret character in the whole game. Adding to this, you also unlock a new outfit for every character by completing the career mode as them, so there's a bit of a reward for playing the game as every character too, giving the game a bit more replay value than it would otherwise have. The replay value was a lot higher in the earlier games because you unlocked something pretty substantial for finishing the game with each skater, but I think for the shorter format this game has, unlocking everything a little bit quicker in this way makes sense. Just before I wrap things up here, the soundtrack in Pro Skater HD is pretty great too. The licenses for the original two game soundtracks were long expired by this point, but they managed to get seven returning tracks and then the eight new ones actually fit with the game really well. The track All Nightmare Long by Metallica was also added into the game as part of the Pro Skater 3 DLC, which is kinda weird because that track wasn't in the original Pro Skater 3. But it's quite a good match for the game, and plus we also got James Hetfield and Robert Trujillo as playable skaters, which is kinda weird, but interesting. I'm putting Tony Hawk's Pro Skater HD in 5th place in my series ranking. Yeah. I actually think HD is better than the original Pro Skater 1. I don't know if that's a controversial opinion, but I'm standing by it. Both Pro Skater 1 and HD have pretty clunky controls, and Pro Skater 1 hands down has HDB in terms of multiplayer. But HD having manuals and reverts, better levels because of the ones from Pro Skater 2 and 3, and it making improvements to the levels returning from the first game, kinda pushes it a little bit ahead of the first game for me. Having said that though, there's just so many things that absolutely kill the game's chances of getting to the ranks of Pro Skater 4, which by the way, despite only being one rank ahead of HD, is a way, way better game. I mean, the obvious thing is that you can't actually get the game anymore unless you resort to nefarious tactics. But on top of that, the lack of any kind of multiplayer is terrible, the sudden loss of momentum and the slow movement speed feels horrific at times, the janky physics when you bail and how you go into a bail when the slightest breeze hits you is rubbish, and the general lack of polish and production value makes the game feel lacking when compared to the other games in the series. And all of that isn't even mentioning the lack of Creator Skater and Creator Park, which have been staples of the series for years now. Having said that, it's still decent, and because it goes back to its more arcadey roots, I feel like it's quite an enjoyable little game. It makes some great changes to goals and the structure of the game compared to 2X. I love how both the manual and revert are available in every level, the extra modes are a very welcome addition, and there's actually quite a few things to unlock, which keeps you hooked. What I want to see from the upcoming remake is a mashup of 2X and HD. I wanted to have all of the content from 2X, but with the updated goals and structure of HD. Then I wanted to go even further and expand the multiplayer and online elements without making the entire game all about the online like Pro Skater 5 did, Add in a much more detailed creator skater, where you can do stuff like go in depth with the facial fine tuning, rather than selecting preset faces. Make the controls feel like Pro Skater 3, if not even better than that. Add in a much more complex creator park, which gives you greater freedom to customise parks and add goals to make proper levels. And overall, give the game amazing production value with a live action opening, unlockable videos, characters, cosmetics, music, levels, decks, skins. Just really take every element of a Tony Hawk game to the next level. Then, not only would it be the best remake the series has seen, but it could even surpass Pro Skater 3 as the best game the series has seen in general. Plus, you know, you could always add in Pro Skater 3 DLC like HD did, but this time include every level and don't botch the goals, and it could easily surpass Pro Skater 3. But whether that happens, only time will tell. For now though, that's Tony Hawk's Pro Skater HD. 
I feel like the general opinion out there is that this game is bad. That's the impression I got before I played it for myself, anyway. But my takeaway from this is that maybe Robo Modo weren't as bad as people make them out to be, because it feels like the heart was in the right place with this. It's a shame that both of the main series Tony Hawk games they developed were rushed, because it kind of ended up dragging their name through the mud. But I suppose all of that is history, because next time we're taking a look at Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 for the PS4, Xbox One and PC. It actually comes out on the 4th of September, so we don't have long left to wait for it at all. So I guess until it releases, I'm just going to be waiting here in anticipation. I guess until it comes out, you could subscribe if you enjoyed the video, give it a like, and leave a comment down below letting me know if you played Pro Skater HD and what you thought about it. And, until the next video, bye!